My love for nature really started with my, my parents and my grandparents taking my, me and my two sisters to the Kruger National Park uh, for school holidays. And my granddad had this unbelievable knowledge about every animal, every plant, every tree, and we would stop, observe and talk about it. And that's where my love for the natural world uh, was really born. You know, no one's really talking about the rhino poaching crisis. So I invested all my time, myself and my co-producer and director, Susan Scott, we sold our homes, we quit our jobs at the broadcaster to make through a journey into the rhino horn war, to really look at the brutality involved and of course also the demand uh, in Vietnam. So we went undercover um, and got face to face with the illegal wildlife smugglers. So that's sort of my journey of fire eyes and fairy tales we had to uh, feed our souls a little bit so we just went to these beautiful wildernesses around the planet the arctic circle uh, the black forest in, in germany and also yellowstone national park in, in north america where we just captured the beauty the essence of all these places the Bewunderung Bewar is about a beautiful planet where we travel to these unspoiled wildernesses so from deep in the desert, the Namib Desert in Namibia, to the Kruger National Park here in South Africa, to the spectacular canyons in uh, Patagonia in South America, where I spend time with these remarkable individuals. So veterinarians, scientists, uh, researchers, doing incredible work for our wildlife. So from uh, desert lions in Namibia, to wild dogs in Kruger, to penguins on Dutton Island, to pumas in, in South America. And I spend time with them, and of course they work with these small and big creatures, but I go a little bit deeper, and this leads to very special moments, um, very intimate moments throughout the series. Uh, I chose Namibia because I know about desert lions, but I wanted to see them for myself. Um, and of course Kruger, you know, we all love going to Kruger, but do we really know what wildlife research is happening there, the positive wildlife stories? And we got unprecedented access to these wilderness areas, but also to the researchers. So we take the camera there, we take the viewer there. And then, of course, uh, Patagonia. I mean, I, I've only dreamt about seeing a puma uh, in nature. It's very rare on a scale from one to ten. It's, it's probably zero. So I really wanted to go there and, and do the bucket list thing, not only for myself, but, but for the viewers. Week two came. It was the second last day. Um, we were filming the sunrise over one of these spectacular canyons. And he came rushing and he said, look, there's a puma. I've got an alert. You have to go and look. So we trekked through the canyon. Very, very difficult terrain. Uh, it's really rock climbing up and down. And for two hours we walked and we came around the corner and there this puma was sitting. Um, incredible specimen looking at us with the sort of expression of, okay, you guys have arrived, are you going to get me out of here or what? Um, and it was just so special, you know, sitting next to the puma, uh, very similar to our lion, but stocky, very strong, a very long tail, a third of the total body length, and that's for balance up and down the canyons. And then, um, of course, the puma woke up um, very slowly. The backside was still a bit lazy, but he was very much aware of us. And then he would stick out his tongue, lick his lips, and that's to sort of waken up the senses. And then he got up and we followed him while he was walking through the canyon. And, and then he sort of just disappeared over the horizon. It was one of those moments where I just thought, I wish time could stand still. So yeah, I, I can't wait for the viewers to see it. Got it.